Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a keyboard that I've been wanting to take a look at ever since I first saw the promotional pictures for. This is the Keyduos NJ68 Pro. Now, I have not had a chance to take a look at the NJ68. It does seem to be quite popular, especially in Southeast Asian markets. Um, but this is the 68 Pro. Now, it did go on drop for a little while. I'm not sure if they fulfilled yet or not. I think it was supposed to fulfill in January, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I could probably take a look at it. But I still have not seen this on AliExpress. And if I have, or if it's listed on there, it's, it's pretty well hidden. So this is the NJ68 Pro. And before we start taking a look at it, just let's, let's take a look at what we've got, what else we've got in the box here. Put this aside for a second. All right, we've got a basic USB-C to USB-A cable. We've got a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Now, this is an aluminum, so there's not gonna be any spot to store this, so I can understand. In most cases, I'm usually like, come on, manufacturers, you can do something. When it's plastic, when it's aluminum, eh, it's kind of a little different story. But I'm interested to see how well the wireless works over um, 2.4 being aluminum. And it looks like we have an extra pair of gaskets. And these seem to be the decent gaskets. I've, I believe I've seen these on another, on the NJ81. Were those white with blue stems? All right, we've got this. My goodness, that is about one of the tiniest um, Allen wrenches I've seen. And I'm sure that we'll figure out what that's from. We've got a switch puller, keycap puller, and we've got, all right, that's uh, probably run that through Google Lens. So I believe that this is really only meant for um, the Southeast Asian or the Asian market, I believe, and that's why it was so difficult to get over here. Uh, but. I saw this keyboard and I had to have it. But I saw, when I saw this keyboard, I just knew I had to have it. And here we are, folks, the NJ68 Pro. Now, does it have a knob? It does. It has a knob that turns sideways. It actually has nice clicks on every um, point on the knob. So it's a nice little tactile knob. But what else do we got here? Let's flip this up. Oh, is that an OLED screen? It is. <laughs> I know, I, I'm, I'm like a kid when it comes to some of these designs. This is, I mean, I've not seen a design like this. Uh, I mean, the, the the last keyboard that got me this giddy was probably the Atom 60 uh, by Boyu uh, because it was a Lego built keyboard. I definitely prefer that over the Mel Geek because the Mel Geek Pixel, I believe that was the name of it. Ooh, it looked like it belonged on the floor at a preschool. This one, I mean, now we've seen keyboards with knobs and we've seen keyboards with OLEDs. Now, and there have been some with both. Let's take a look at this thing. So we have a 65%. We have uh, three, uh, well, there's no exploded navigation or arrow cluster, but so we have three keys for the navigation because one of the keys where the delete would normally be is uh, taken up by the knob. Now, the fact that the knob can turn to the side, is it useful? I mean, if you're using it for scrolling, you know, to replace your mouse, yeah, I think I think it is useful. So, I don't know, I, I, uh, like I said, from what I understand, the screen is programmable. I do have a video that I have to make and I will make it upcoming because it actually came with this. It is a replacement PCB for the NJ81. Let's take a look. We got right here, we've got the um, USB port. It is to the side. I don't believe that we have a gasket mount. Um, we have, oh, those are like little stickers on the feet. But, so we have these flat little nuts. Oh yeah, that's right, this is a wire. Oh, that's duh. The, uh, that is some bright LED. For a second I forgot that this was wireless. <laughs> so, 
can see Keydoos right there as it's loading up. And I don't know if that's just the... Um, like I said, I'm probably going to have to translate, do some uh, Google Lens translation on the manual to figure out. Because this does seem to have is it three stops or two? No, nope, just two. So it may only have 2.4 and wired, but I don't know. I'm trying to see this look like. Oh yeah, okay. I couldn't quite tell. These actually, <laughs> I gotta say, I think this is the first aluminum kit that I've seen that has adjustable feet. I mean, that is pretty ingenious. Now granted, that's only buying you a few millimeters, but sometimes that's all you need to get the right typing angle. That is, I gotta say, that's pretty ingenious. And um, I definitely, I, I gotta give uh, Kiduos a gold star for that. I mean, that's a pretty nifty design there. I guess for a second I was like, wait a minute, that looks like a hinge. And it looked like it had feet below. and. Yeah, it sure does. So the fact that you can get two typing angles on an aluminum 65% kit with both a knob that you can get out of the way. If you don't like it, get it out of the way. Just move it out of the way. And an OLED, which, I mean, you could just have a funny video on there. You could uh, have stats from your computer showing. You could just do your words per minute. Uh, I believe all these things are achievable because I believe this one is fully programmable from the communication that I've had with Keydoos. Anyway, so, I mean, oh God, this thing is just lovely. I, uh, I, I'm going to have to look for, whenever you get a, a uh, laptop, well, anything with an OLED screen, I would suggest, uh, I have plenty, and I'm sure a lot of us do, whoever uses uh screen protectors on our phones especially the film screen protectors um, i have a whole box of older ones that i didn't use for phones i no longer have so what i do whenever i get an oled screen is before i take this protective tape off i take one of those older screens that i don't need and i cut out roughly the size of what it is and then put it over there after i take off the tape that way there's protection because sometimes, no, don't get me wrong. Sometimes these OLEDs actually have a little glass panel, which is great. Sometimes it's just this little thin film plastic and, or it could be a little bit thicker, but it gets scratched real easy. And there's a not, there's no easy way to replace it. So if you have an OLED display, whether it be your keyboard or any other accessory, and you have some spare phone screen protector film laying around, I suggest you cover it. It's going to save you a lot of headache and heartache should anything happen to that screen. That's my PSA for the day. <laughs> so, yeah, we definitely have a um, very nice keyboard. Now, seeing as... Uh, oh, cool. I don't know. I love the lines on this. I mean, I'm big into um, cyberpunk, Neuromancer, William Gibson. I mean, that's probably... I mean, sci-fi is one of my favorite uh, fiction genres. But yeah, this one, um, this, this one definitely, the design of it really just is lovely. Now I am looking at it though, and I'm seeing some things that, not that I, it, it, that I dislike, but it's just things I know I'm gonna have to uh, take into consideration here. Now for one, we have no plate PCB foam, and we do have a steel plate, that is a steel plate. So that's part of the weight that's coming on here. Now we do seem to have some sort of, hmm. Yeah, there's not much room in there. There's a really light, um, like a open cell foam in there. So, hmm. Now today we're just gonna do the stock. I, I just, I still, I can't get over the, these feet. I, I, you do is keep knocking these keyboards out and please make them more widely available um so i can kind of excuse it not having dampening because i mean i love that design and i can add the dampening myself so definitely going to be coming back to this board to tune it but today we're just going to take a look at it and do a sound test of its stock as it is now i did want to take a look at what i've decided to do with some of these kits when i do a stock sound test is if for some reason they come like just badly lubed I will tune them up but with lube not like 
actually do a mod to them or anything. Just make sure that the lube is nice and well spread. But these actually have a decent amount of lube and they're nice and um, they slide nicely and the housings are nicely attached. Now we do have uh, south facing LED, obviously five five hot swap or five pin hot swap compatible sockets. We actually can look over here for the caps lock. Looks like we have an extra LED. It's probably it's either red or yellow. It's probably just a single color LED from when you've got the caps lock. I like that. Um, it may also serve as charging. We'll see. Like I said, the instructions are in Chinese, so I, I don't know. But again, all of that I can forgive it for you know the price that this keyboard was. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the Key Duos NJ68 Pro. This is a three-mode aluminum alloy, 65% keyboard that includes both a knob and a rotatable OLED screen. Now, this keyboard MSRP is kind of all over the place. There is a built version that does include more dampening and also switches and keycaps that sells for between $250 and $290. Now, this bare bone kit was purchased through a buyer and was uh, the cost of it was roughly, uh, with all shipping and everything involved, $67. So, um, and the only other plate option that seems to be available is a brass plate. As of yet, I have, I have not seen any third party plates. Now, it, this does include some open cell light case foam, but there is no dampening between the plate and the PCB. It does have three and five pin hot swap compatible south facing LED sockets. It has a weight stock of 827 grams. The chin of the keyboard sits at 21 millimeters off the ground while the back is at 34 millimeters giving you a default typing angle of 9 degrees. For a first for me, an aluminum kit that has adjustable feet. It has a set of one pair of feet that if you extend them will bring the back height up 3 millimeters to 37 millimeters and the typing angle to 11 degrees. All right, so first things first, before we can do a stock sound test of this kit, we're gonna have to load up some switches and I'm reached in. I don't know if I have enough. That's why I got a few extra here. Uh, these are uh, Gezoo U4Ts, uh, the Thaki, they're both 65 gram. It's just that one is the, um, these are prototypes, I believe, because he was testing the new plastic. Um, and these are RGB. So I'm going to try to use, I think I have enough for a 65% here, but if I, I'm just going to kind of focus on the alphas and, and the primary um, modifiers and see if, uh, if that's enough. If not, I've got some spares. They don't sound much different at all that I can tell. So I, uh, but like I said, I think I have enough of those. I might only need a couple, and if, uh, if so, I'll put them over here on the navigation column, which I probably won't even touch during the sound test. So let's go ahead and load up some U4Ts, and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do for a uh, for keycaps. I've got an idea, though. I've been wanting to do it for a while, and I think this is the keyboard to do it on. Well, and here we are. I looks like I just had enough for a 60% board, so I added uh, these. Um, like I said, I really can't tell the difference. I, I'm a big, big fan of Gazoo switches. Um, some people will say, oh, well, they're a little pricey. I'm like, eh, the fact that, I mean, I don't have to open these up and lube them. They're donut depth and they're smooth. There's no wobble to speak of. I mean, no significant wobble to speak of, and they just work. They're very consistent, and the tactility I love. As this is my favorite. I mean, the U4T is hands down my favorite tactile. Yeah, there's some other good ones, but don't get me wrong. I love a whole world of switches, and I'm always going to be trying. 
pretty much any switch that I can get my hands on because I'm a big fan of switches and I'm a big fan of Franken switches uh, because they don't make the entire sound, but they're a big part of it. So, I mean, if you're doing a decent build, but you're still trying to save money, I still think um, at what they run, I think they run at 65 or 68 cents a switch. Uh, they're middle ground because I've seen switches, you know, brand new switches, 112, 120 a switch. So they're in the mid range. And the fact that I don't have to open them because I mean, Akos are nice, but the lube ones are a little bit more. Granted, they're, they're still cheaper, but um, I still have had to lube the pre lube ones because it's, it's a film. It's not necessarily the greatest of lubing. I mean, it'll do the job, but especially if I'm doing a commission, but I don't have to. With the u4t so the, the time it saves me the consistency and the end result is why i stick with them but anyway now what about keycaps today i'm gonna do something a little different i don't know how it's gonna turn out but i am actually going to use two keycap sets this is a gmk arctic clone set And this is a white on black uh, set from, this is Ghost Judges. Uh, they sell, if I'm not mistaken, exclusively to Cape Republic. There's a key for every single layout that I have on here. And I have some on layouts. Um, I was honestly very impressed with these keys. And for what they go for, I think they're at 40, 45 bucks. Double shot, PBT, um, three racks of keycaps and very nice selection of yeah your, your common standards but I, I was i was a lot more impressed than i was expecting but that's just as an aside but i'm going to use both of these keycaps to emulate a keycap set which i don't have these are both very profile so it should work we're uh doing a video having some fun so why not let's see if you guys can guess when i come back what i'm trying to emulate All right, so here we are. Now you might be noticing something different. Um, I don't speak often, but my wife is the most amazing person in the world, especially to me and our kids. We see the world through completely different eyes, yet we get along famously. She knew exactly what I was trying to emulate uh, when she came and saw this keyboard, because I, as I was putting away the keycap, she's like, um, you're missing something. I'm like, what? She went, she reached, she actually <laughs> knew which keycap set and pulled out. Because these are all P, uh, PBT, double shot, so and cherry. So the profile is nice. And, but she pulled this out of a Bingzu or Hamon, now I can't, no, Hamon um, clone keycap set that I haven't used in a long time. So this is actually made up of three different keycap sets. We've got the Arctic for both the escape and the enter as well as the rest of the modifiers we've got the white on black from ghost judges for the main alphas and then we've got an h red from uh, the clones hamon right yeah it's hamon not bingzu bingzu is the purplish one yeah no this is hamon hamon is a ham in spanish um and <laughs> that i mean obviously it's not a trackpad uh i mean a, a nib or nub nub it's not a thick pad nub but i think that anyone that sees this is going to know what i'm trying to emulate now there is a set out there called think caps but i haven't seen them for less than like i think 130 140 dollars so i've been wanting to do this for a while i kind of figured i had the keycaps but my wife come in and tell me to put that h on there honestly cherry on top Anyway, for being stock and being a hundred hundred dollar aluminum kit with a lot of extras, I have got to say, wow, it sounds pretty good. Even before I do dampening and I do 
the kind of mods that I'm going to do. Once I get to that, holy crap, this thing is going to sound amazing. It's going to be interesting to take a look at the interiors. I'm sure that's not going to be too difficult. And I like that the switch is down at the bottom. Um, we'll see what we'll use for, for dampening material, but I'm definitely coming back to this one soon. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm switching this one out. I'm going to have it, I'm going to use it as my um, daily for a bit because not only do I like how it sounds, I want to play with these features. I love the the knob on the side. I almost want to use it for scrolling web pages so I don't have to lift my hand, reach for the mouse. I'm just reading something that I can just... Gonna go ahead and uh, do a stock sound test of the NJ68 Pro. Now this was bare bone and we built it up. I didn't do anything to the stabs. They're not perfect, but they sound damn good. Some of the best, better stock plate mounted stabs. Um, that's another thing. We'll take a look at the PCB, see if we can actually um, do some improvements. Now this is a PCB I could probably print me up a PTFE, a 3D printed um, new plate because only other plate I know that is available is a brass and I mean brass or steel I don't really care I don't know why brass is so big for plates I personally don't like it uh, I would prefer plastic uh, or even FR4 it would be fine but st steel I prefer over um over brass, aluminum over the two, other two. Aluminum is very light, so not as not as hard to get rid of the ping. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test of my NJ68 Pro ThinkPad <laughs> or uh, uh, ThinkBoard. Hey, yeah, it's a ThinkBoard. That's what I'll call it, my ThinkBoard. Anyway, hopefully you guys like it. If you guys have any ideas for mods or have any questions for when I go ahead and open this up and um, you know, make it sing. Please let me know in the comments below. But until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.